All right, guys, so if you follow the channel, you may have heard Sunday night that I had a new project that I was working on. This is something that I've wanted to build for a while, but I just keep putting it back, keep putting it back. And you guys know I got a thing for animals, the wildlife, and kind of a conservationist at heart, I guess you could say. And here at the shack, we have a lot of little creatures that need homes. And the latest creature that we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the process and the steps that I went through to develop this, uh, but all the little flying rats around here, AKA bats, now will have homes. And it's an easy CNC project that all it requires is some plywood, a CNC, a little glue, and an air nailer, or screws, or nails. I, I used an air nailer, because I got one and it was easier. But we're gonna set up the computer here and I wanna take you guys from concept to working product and just kind of show you the workflow on this thing, but it is really neat and I am really, really proud of the design and uh, <laughs> I'll show you what it looks like. So stick around. All right, guys, so a lot of you are asking, how in the heck did you come up with this idea? Well, and a bat house has always been one of those things that intrigues me, and the more I try to get like good uh, predators at my house to help with the bad things like mosquitoes and other flying bugs, uh, this just seemed like something cool to do. I mean, I like bats, I like nature. My daughter, both my kids are kind of in the nature, uh, and it's woodworking. <clears throat> I figured out a way of making them really, really quick, really, really easy, because now all I got to do is go get a piece of half inch birch plywood or something similar. I use birch for this one. It's a little pricey for a bat box, but I plan to paint it and all that. Probably orange. Uh, <laughs> if I don't find something saying that bats don't like orange, if I do, then we might have to tame that down. Uh, but I do plan on painting it and waterproofing it and sealing it up real good. Uh, it will most likely be under the eave or under the edge of a roof somewhere. Uh, so, you know, but I didn't, want, I didn't want to use anything like MDF or anything that would just fall apart if it ever did get wet. Uh, the next ones I make, I may even do them out of cedar uh, because I do have a sawmill and I can make some cedar planks that are wide enough to do it with. I kind of scaled it down with the anticipation of being able to use a cedar, you know, board with it. Uh, the whole thing, the whole thing's not terribly, terribly wide. So uh, you're looking at nine inches from side to side. You know, now you gotta have a wider piece to run it through the CNC. If you wanted to build one of these by hand, you know, nine inch piece of material would be all you would need. I just wanted to make it a CNC project. So if I do have people that are like, hey, I want one of those, I can crank them out now. So I spent the time and come up with the idea, kind of build my prototype, did a little research on them and that's how I wound up at the CNC. So I'm just gonna show you the tools that went into this project. It, it, it didn't take long, but it, it ex wasn't exactly a snap of finger either. So let me go down here and show you my research, development, and then design. So here we go. All right, as far as research, yeah, I just Googled bat boxes, uh, bat houses, and there's all these different you know bat houses that you can find. This one's like 42 bucks on Amazon. It's very similar, you know, it's got the little slats. You know, it's, it's got screws instead of staples and stuff. And they've got like a little bat box logo on it. Uh, you've got a lot of other designs. This one looks more like a, a shutter uh, or something that you would just like stick to the side of a house. Uh, so there's lots of different designs to, to choose from. Uh, so I wanted to kind of stick with the basic designs because I figure if people are selling these, this is probably a shape that bats would be comfortable with. And so I stuck with that. And just kind of put my own little, you know, detail to it. This is one of the ones like I had looked at making before I got to CNC. This incorporates some like quarter by quarter hardware cloth attached to it that gives the bat something to be able to climb up into the recess uh, and, and and remain hidden. Uh, these, yeah, that's that's the little guys that we're looking building a house for. This, these are the guys that's going to be at the Bat Hotel. Or wait a minute, Bats Hotel, kind of like Bates Hotel. That might work, but we'll figure that out. Uh, but this is kind of the fashionable idea that I had, not on the house. Brandy would never go for that, uh, but near the house. Uh, these are the different, you know, some of the different design boxes. Uh, you got stuff like this. 
But I wanted to go compact, low profile, something that would fit under the Eve. This is one of the, you know, that kind of kind of a cool looking design. Uh, this is very similar. This one has an angled roof. It is out in the weather. Mine hopefully won't be out in the weather. But you get the idea. Uh, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just kind of putting my own little my own little uh, design to it. Like this one here, looks like they just used random table saw cuts across the material for a climbing ledge. And so that was one of the things I thought, you know, I've got a CNC, so I can do this on the CNC, and I can make this thing to where I can just cut it out and throw everything together, and it'll look cool. It'll be easy to design, and so that's what I did. So the first stop I made, of course, uh, was over in Fusion to kind of sketch it out, basically, and figure out exactly how I wanted to build it. And you can see here, uh, I did decide to create a small little lip, uh, a one millimeter recess on the exterior parts where the where the joints go together. I did incorporate a little one millimeter lip on those. Uh, that was more or less just to help me try to keep the light out of there uh, and get a good good tight fit with the CNC. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, getting getting it to fit snugly. Uh, even the top, uh, if you look up here at the top, if I can get it to spin around. Uh, you can see I did a little recess here so that the sides, the back, and the front all have that little one millimeter recess. Just enough to hopefully keep, you know, keep light out and make it nice and dark in there for them. Uh, and keep moisture, hopefully, from getting in. And I used a healthy amount, as you, as you can see here in just a second, I used a healthy amount of glue to hold everything together. Uh, but yeah, this was how I kind of come up with the idea and looked at it and made sure... It was the way that I wanted it and uh, didn't do all of the work in here. This was more or less just to get my dimensions and make sure everything was going to fit together properly before I went to milling it because using Fusion to generate these little images and stuff is cheaper than buying materials. So once I had it, once I had an idea, I had some measurements, figured out how everything was going to go together. Uh, I went, wait a minute. I don't, I don't think I, I don't know if I've saved that since I made some changes. I went over to VCarve, and uh, as you know, I run VCarve Pro from Vectric to do my designs and stuff. And I didn't export anything from Fusion because this was such a simple design. I literally came over here, took the measurements that I came up with, and throw these pieces together, and just set my tool pass to do the part to the work for me. Now, I will say this, guys. I used a quarter inch bit because it was just it was already in the machine. It was easy doing these little quarter inch grooves that I put down through here. Uh, it was a one pass type deal. Uh, so you can use a smaller bit if you want and you'll get sharper corners. The one thing that you will get if you do this uh, with, with this particular design, in order to not have like some just tiny little corners right here on this, I would have had to extend this down probably about another four or five millimeters and have it exposed, but I didn't want to do that. This wasn't that precise of a project, so more or less, I just put the plywood in there, slid it down really tightly against those two little tiny pieces, and it'll kind of marry itself up uh, as long as you pay attention to that. Everything else fit like a glove a uh, little bit. Like I said, you'll have a little tiny pieces here that you may have to, you know, if you're really wanting it perfect, you can get you a little chisel or exacto knife and kind of trim these corners because where that bit goes around through here, there, there are going to be a little bit of material left. And I'll try to show you that over here in the preview mode. So got you in a preview mode here. Let me, well, no, I don't. Let me get back into preview mode. I'm going to reset the preview. And you'll just kind of get to see all of the action as it happens. I've got the, uh, the little bit of reliefs. I've got them going first and then the cuts last. Uh, I did have to go back and uh, redo this. This was a, this was auto tabs, and these two did not work effectively. Uh, so I had to go back and edit those. Uh, matter of fact, before I save this file, I need to go in here and fix that because I don't know what they were thinking with putting the tabs where they are because they, they, they weren't very effective. Uh, being that this is uh, small pieces, I am going to run three tabs but I want them right there where they're actually on some solid material. Uh, that would work much, much better than the two. The two was kind of a, it was kind of a pain, not gonna lie to you. I should have paid that attention when I was doing the cut originally, but when it came down through here, this tab, it was still connected them, but it was very unstable and let these pieces move. 
to the point to where the brush on the uh, dust shoe actually pushed one of them over and messed up my cut. So I had to redo it. Uh, so pay attention to that when you're uh, when you're laying stuff out. Make sure if you use auto tabs and you just let it place them, make sure it doesn't put them in a crazy spot like this because having three like that, I use a flush cut bit on my router table to clean these guys up. I use a DeWalt oscillating saw. Once the cut is complete, go come in from the backside and just kind of nick those guys loose. Take the pieces over to the table uh, for the uh, router table and I take and knock those off with that flush cut bit and we're good to go. So I, I don't stress if I have to add a lot of tabs sometimes. Uh, they're pretty easy to get off if you got the right tools. If not, then you know you may wanna consider that. But that was the design, guys. And then once I got that, it was simply uh, put everything together and that was really, really easy. And I'll kinda of show you that video here as we go forward. All right, guys, like I said, uh, easy, simple little project, and I'm gonna add some customization to it. I don't know what yet. Uh, of course, all you Batman fans out there, I'm sure have a little input as to what you think I should put on it. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I've thought about trying to come up with the Bat Shack or the Bat Cave or something like that. But anyway, I want to uh, engrave something on this, and I'm gonna mount it, probably, I'm probably gonna put three or four of these around the property. Uh, because you know I live here in the south and in the south some of you guys from Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida understand that mosquitoes can be an issue especially as summer approaches. I've already got a small family of uh, the little small brown bats that fly around at, at night right at dark but I want more of them because the more bats the less mosquitoes or at least that's the hope. But I'm kind of curious to see if they're, how long it takes them to take up residency in my new bat houses. Uh, so like I said, I may put several up along the property because I'm still doing my research on what's the best place to put them. But it seems to be under eaves, carnishes, random spots on trees is a good spot. Uh, if you're a bat professional, feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know where you have your bat house so that I can uh, kind of steal some of your ideas and put my bat house there. But I've got a building at the sawmill, I've got the shack, I've got the lean-to behind here where the tractor sits, and I got a whole bunch of trees. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna put any on the house. I don't, I don't think Brandy would like that. Uh, but I'm gonna also uh, modify them slightly. Uh, I do either need to come up with a hanger for the back of them or incorporate some holes here. My plan was if I mounted them on a building such as the shack or uh, the sawmill shop, I would just get a countersink bit and add a couple of holes wherever I needed to and put some screws in there because you know, bats aren't gonna be that heavy. This is birch, half inch birch plywood. Uh, so I think it can handle a few bats climbing up and down it. Uh, I would not, not go anywhere, even with the screws down here somewhere. But I'm kind of proud of my little ladder. That, that ladder design worked out really well and it didn't require me to use any hardware cloth or screen or anything like that. And I feel comfortably that uh, these little quarter inch strips will work good for their little feet. So <laughs> I'll let you know guys, but this was, this was a cool project. I enjoyed this. This is the kind of stuff that I got that thing for. Uh, so anyway, 
just thought I'd share the project with you. It was original. It was something I don't see a lot of. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys are now going to be going around looking, searching for bats and bat houses. So uh, have fun with that. It's, it's pretty unique once you get to, to know the little creatures and what they are. They got, kind of got a bad rap with the whole Dracula thing. But they're really, they're really not that bad. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.